Hello and welcome to another episode of Rotted Entertainment's Coffee and Contemplation, my weekly vlog uh, where I chime in once a week or so uh, on the weekends. And man, I am getting this one down just under the wire, but regardless, here I am. And uh, I have a few updates, some about the channel, some about personal life, and uh, just kind of generally just shooting from the hip here. I got no notes. Uh, personal life, I guess health update first and foremost, um, I'm doing pretty well with that. Still haven't touched a cigarette. So I guess that makes about what, three weeks now. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, resting heart rate still going down as a result of that, uh, you know, slowly, but surely, uh, as far as the diet goes, I began that in earnest on Monday and it's been a super duper amount of fun. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. I was messaging somebody and I've said something along the lines of, uh, uh, everything is terrible. Everybody sucks and so on and so forth. <laughs> That's just really how I felt at that point. Um, it's getting a little bit easier, but overall, um, I have dropped about 10 pounds and gained a new belt notch. So, I mean, it's ticking along when you get to be my size, that initial water weight push happens pretty quickly and it happens pretty drastically, but, um, it's going to taper off. It has tapered off and it's going to be slow going from here, which is fine. I don't mind slow going. That's how I want to do it. Uh, but it's ticking along. So, um, trying to adhere to it, trying to, you know, uh, keep that discipline in check and just continuing on, uh, yeah, working for that health. Yay. Uh, in other news, uh, Thanksgiving's come up. Looking forward to that. Uh, I mean, uh, one thing that, uh, you might not know about me is I love to cook. I really do. Uh, it's, uh, one of my big passions and, uh, Thanksgiving for me on that level is kind of like my Super Bowl, and um, I plan on doing a lot from scratch this year. I'm really looking forward to it. I am, I am for the last several years, I've kind of been the one uh, amongst friends and family and so forth. If they uh, you know want to bring people over, uh, I'll be hosting Thanksgiving dinner for them, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be trying to do as much as like I said from scratch as possible. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to be tackling some pie crust that I've never done before. Um, uh, going to be doing some, uh, instead of like store-bought rolls, I'm going to be doing, you know, my own yeast rolls, things like that. So I'm looking forward to that. I mean, straight from me talking about the diet to Thanksgiving dinner, but regardless, like I said, for a cook, from a cooking aspect, this is my Super Bowl, and I'm really super duper looking forward to it. Plus I found out just recently that, uh, my future mother-in-law will be joining us, uh, at our place at our new house. And, uh, so pressure's on, on that one. Looking forward to it. I, I really am. I actually love her to pieces. She's a fantastic woman. Uh, and I don't say that, you know, with like with a, you know, uh, <laughs> hostage, uh, you know, wink or anything like that. It's, it's, it's legitimate. She's a fantastic, fantastic lady. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to, uh, you know, showing her what I got as far as cooking skills go. Um, uh, I guess moving on with, uh, channel stuffs. Uh, yeah, just finished off the Halloween franchise. Uh, franchises are, we are a weird one for me. Um, it's always a bit of a, a multi-level kind of thing. First of all, I really love, uh, just getting them done. Uh, and that doesn't mean that, you know, I just kind of, you know, flash through them as quickly as I can without giving a whole lot of thought. I really do try to put a lot of thought into them. Uh, but it is nice to get them out of the way. It is nice to, especially with things like Halloween is they're continuing to make new movies to be able to just go straight to the next one and have all the groundwork laid. So now I have all the Halloween movies reviewed Whatever comes up next, I can just kick over to. And if somebody is interested after watching that, uh, what I thought of Season of the Witch or that one that Paul Rudd was in, they'd be able to see it. Uh, but the thing about franchises is historically, and I've done a few now, uh, where I just kind of plow through them like this. Uh, Phantasm Puppet Master was the first one that I did, which that one got pretty painful. Uh, that's one thing I can say is Halloween was not painful, like at any point, aside from possibly resurrection, but one bad movie does not a painful franchise review make, uh, you know, it's just painful as like Puppet Master where, you know, you got retro and then you, like, you got the three axis movies and like, you just know that you finish one bad one and you know, you got at least two more, uh, terrible ones coming up. Um, uh, so that, that's when it starts to get painful when you really just almost don't want to continue <laughs> and i didn't reach that point with halloween uh but yeah I, i've done puppet master i've done phantasm um sleepaway camp was not a blast through it kind of thing but uh uh silent night deadly night that was that one got weird real weird uh, but 
Uh, as far as the multi-level aspect of it, one thing that I can always expect when I do a franchise blast like this is low numbers. And that's, I don't know, I don't know why it's, it's kind of an unfortunate thing, but uh, in this case with the Halloween one, as I finish off the tail end of it, my subscriber count has dropped. <laughs> uh, my average views have definitely dropped, uh, even though they're, you know, fantastically popular movies. Uh, something about me doing a whole bunch of the same type, just one after the other, doesn't seem to really resonate as far as whatever analytics or views, uh, you know, are in play. So uh, I don't know why that is, but I got to, you know, as far as laying groundwork and getting the, the, the staples out of the way, you know, what am I going to do? I, you know, if, if somebody wants to know what I thought of Nightmare on Elm Street, eventually I'm going to have to review it. And if I'm going to review one or two or three, I may as well review all of them. Uh, so whatever, this is a passion project for me anyway. This is just fun to do. Um, if people are on board and they want to ride this train with me, then all the better for it. But, you know, this is not something that, you know, as much as I would love for this to take off and love to, you know, start making some money at it, it's not why I do this. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have a whole lot of expectations or um, delusions of grandeur or anything. I mean, there's a few things that I'm good at out in the world. Uh, <laughs> watching horror movies, sure. Uh, but also, you know, for my full-time job, my real paying thing that, you know, puts this roof over my head. Um, you know, I'm a network admin and, uh, you know, I do computer repair, uh, occasionally on the side for, you know, the community or, you know, local businesses, things like that. You know, if, uh, I wind up a little short on cash or not uh, short on cash, but, um, if, uh, you know, holidays are coming up, something like that. And I just need a little extra, I'll hang out my open sign and, you know, do a little computer repair work on the side. And when I do that, <coughs> uh, <laughs> I, I just did that somewhat recently and helped, uh, you know, uh, a few people out. And I realized that I made more, uh, 10 times more in one hour's worth of work than I did over a year and a half of doing this channel. So, I mean, yeah, this is not about the money. <laughs> Certainly not. Um, you know, if it means that when I do a franchise, my view counts drip, uh, you know, drop or my subscriber count drops, unfortunate, but you know, that's just the way it goes. Um, I still think that, uh, this is fun for me and I'm doing the best I can and I'm putting out the best stuff that I can. So, um, happy as far as that goes. But speaking of which, uh, <laughs> uh, running very counterintuitive to the stuff that I was just saying. Uh, I'm going to be doing something that I've never done before, and I'm going straight from one franchise into another, starting tomorrow. Uh, I finished with the Halloween franchise, and this time I'm going to be doing one that's a lot less well-known. Um, if you're a fan of Asian horror, then you're probably going to be no, you know, aware of this one, but um, for the most part, this is more low-key. I'm going to be tackling the Whispering Corridor series, which is only five movies, so I should, if I do it once every weekend, uh, weekday, should get it knocked out by the end of the week, which that's my plan. You know, we'll see how it goes, but that's my plan. I, uh, tomorrow I will be releasing my review of the first Whispering Corridor movie. Um, if you've never heard of this series, it's pretty um, it's pretty remarkable just in how influential it was. Uh, Korean film in general was very, very, very heavily censored. And if you were trying to depict things about uh, societal life, government, school, things like that. Um, and it was less than flattering. It wasn't allowed. You just, it wasn't going to, you know, the movie was not going to get made. Um, and uh, I mean, even if it was accurate in life, art depicting that, no way. Uh, and then the early mid nineties, uh, the, that censorship kind of got repealed and lifted. And the Whispering Corridor series started with Whispering Corridors in 1998. And it's credited as being one of the most influential Korean horror films ever made just because of how much it kickstarted. You know, it's like now that the shackles are off, let's see what we can do. And it really drove the movement. It, uh, I don't know about necessarily the first Korean horror film after the censorship lift, but it was definitely the most popular and it really kickstarted things. And they wound up making five of these movies that actually had no tie to one another 
uh, really whatsoever, not even in name, but just kind of more in spirit than anything else. It's kind of what you would call a loose affiliation of name, um, even though you know it's not like Whispering Corridors 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, they are still considered to be part of the five film Whispering Corridor series. So yeah, looking forward to getting going with that. Uh, look for that coming up. And I think that's about all everything I wanted to cover today. That's, you know, franchise, yep, Halloween, yep, Whispering Quarters, yep, health, yep, okay. Uh, yeah, that's everything I wanted to cover. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow with the first episode of Whispering Quarters Review uh, and possibly next weekend with the uh, next episode of Coffee and Contemplation. So thank you very much for joining me here and uh, for supporting this channel. I'll see you next time.